It's known that there are softwares, or there are programs uh, that are encoded in the genome, and then uh, govern the uh, creation of the organs, but in fact, they don't exist. These programs are the following ones. These programs can be switched on. They can be launched. Sometimes uh, they switch on. They are switch on uh, on themselves as the result of mutation. It's known that. Uh, a hand doesn't have teeth, but there is a mutation in uh, the protein Telpid 2. As a result of this mutation, a chicken on the jaws, uh, um, they have uh, teeth, and the teeth started to grow. Very small teeth, uh, it's not quite clear. These teeth, uh, they start growing as a result of uh, the removal of the block of this, of, of the program. Uh, there is a sonic hedgehog protein. And this Sony hedgehog protein can uh, start different programs for teeth growth. Uh, there is a block that blocks uh, this program, but if uh, this block is mutated, teeth started to grow. It's interesting that these are the teeth. Uh, that are similar to the ancient ancestors of birds. They don't have enamel. They don't have the dentin, dentine like we have. And they're similar in forms uh, to alligator's teeth. We can see that uh, these transcriptional programs, uh, they emerge. Uh, due to the breakdown in the uh, governing protein. But in some cases, these programs can be switched, to, switched on not due to the breakdown of the protein. But because in the DNA, uh, some letter has been substituted In the site where the protein is to be bound to for the program to launch. As a result uh, of the substitution of nucleotide, uh, the protein can't find uh, the proper site for binding. Uh, it doesn't bound, and the morphogenetic program is. Uh, uh, failed. In this case, uh, this similar protein, Sonic Hedgehog, it can't bind to the regulatory site located in the intron of uh, uh, the protein LMBR1. As a result, uh, HAN has developed a great number of fingers. Uh, instead of four, uh, it may have seven, six, five, like it's shown in this photo. Uh, substitution point, uh, substitution in the protein, in the DNA, 
may lead to a serious morphogenetic consequences. One more classical example. It's a regulator element of uh, OCA2 gene. It's known that hmm, there is a point variant of the position at the chromosome 15, depending on the type of the nucleotide located here. A person uh, may have a different eye color. For example, if uh, uh, letter G is located on this side in the homozygote uh, on bo in both chromosomes, in this case, uh, with a probability of 99%, uh, this person will have blue eyes. At the same time, if in this site uh, letter A is located, or it's a heterozygote on one chromosome and on the other chromosome is G, with the probability of 80%, uh, the eyes will be brown. And uh, uh, they will no be blue. They will be the green of uh, other color. It's important that this position is uh, located at uh, the rather great distance from uh, the gene uh, that regulates uh, the eye color. And it's located in the intron of a different gene. In 21 kilobyte from or from the promoter of OCA2 gene. Uh, this system is well known and mechanically it's shown that in this on this side in the DNA a loop is formed and in the 3D space uh, this position is uh, in contact with their promoter uh, of the OCA2 gene. One more classical example is somatic mutation in the promoter of a reverse transcriptase of telomeres. Uh, previously, we have been talking about mutations, uh, hereditary mutations. Now we are talking about somatic mutations uh, that happen in some different clones of a multicellular organism. It turns out uh, that if in some sites uh, the substitution happens, in uh, the promoter of the gene, uh, it's a great probability uh, that uh, tumors uh, may de be developed here. For example, in case of liposarcoma, in 80% of cases, in this, this promoter contains uh, substitution. There are only four places where letters can be changed uh, to have this consequence. In 80% of uh, cases, one uh, of uh, case, uh, one substitution happens, happened. The table on the screen, how we can see different types of cancer, it's shown that for different types, uh, substitutions in these sites of the promoter 
it can result in uh, this kind of event. One more example, purely genetical one. Individual variants were studied associated with uh, schizophrenia, onset of schizophrenia. It was a major project, international project. 37 thousand of uh, schizophrenic cases were studied and uh, 115,000 control cases. Uh, variants in the genome were studied in schizophrenic patients comparing to control group. It turned out uh, that there are 108 uh, large uh, sites in the genome, loci in the genome, uh, where this substitution happened. But uh, the overwhelming majority is located in the loci far from the genes responsible for protein encoding. Namely, 21, substitute, 21 variants uh, was in the sites, in the loci uh, encoded by proteins, 11 ones in a single locus, approximately 30 Low sites were in the places where the, it was shown substitutions uh, uh, did influence uh, their gene expressions in the brain. And all the 121, nine non-coding substitutions, they influenced gene expressions in blood cells. It's known, and it's an old dispute, that schizophrenia has an autoimmune component. It's not surprisingly that the blood cells were studied and they appeared in this experiment. Nikolai Kazimirovich uh, presented a good introduction into epigenetic factors influencing gene expression and the traits. Uh, this picture shows um, at the molecular level how uh, the factors uh, influencing uh, the gene transcription are distributed. In green balls, uh, they are nucleosomes representation. When these nucleosomes are condensed together, uh, like in the left part of the screen, like in a, a grape, uh, uh, there is no transcription. Chromatin is closed to there. For the transcription to be open, the promoter series in the left bottom corner, or right bottom corner, sorry, there should be an open space uh, that is drawn at the bottom in the middle, and regulatory proteins are bound here, attached here, uh, these uh, violet and blue balls. Uh, apart from this, uh, via the looping of the DNA in the 3D space to these uh, sites, uh, the parts can be bound. Uh, the 
and it's uh, drawn uh, on the upper part on the right. It's a body inside. It's an Hansa region uh, that can be located quite uh, far from the DNA, but but in a 3D, uh, they can be contacted. This appearance is uh, quite difficult to study uh, in experiments. In all the cases where the experiments are carried out, it's necessary to have additional bioinformative processing. Namely, it turned out uh, that Experimental low size of the DNA uh, that uh, regulatory proteins uh, contact to, they have very similar sequences of the nucleotides. Uh, in the upper right corner, we may see the alignment of these uh, loci, of these sites. We can see where the D-dimer uh, has the contact with the DNA. It's on the left. The letters are well preserved. And on the scheme, uh, these letters are shown as uh, higher than the other ones. This kind of motif of, of the uh, CTG, TTA in the middle. They, this motive can be used to find in the DNA, like in the text, uh, the sites where regulatory proteins uh, bind to. It's interesting that these motives are well preserved in different types of vertebrates. And it's checked in the experiment. For example, knockouts as to transcription factors of the fish, Daniel Reira. They can be saved uh, with the human proteins. Uh, the, uh, this uh, analog homolog transcription factor, uh, human factor, can be expressed uh, into the fish and it can include expression of the fish genes in right sites. In correct sites. On this picture, we can see, uh, uh, we can see point dots uh, in uh, fluorescent, fluorescent points. Uh, with the expression uh, in the somites, uh, the human proteins. If we see what kind of factors influence uh, the certain genes expression, it turns out uh, that the main influence uh, is for uh, epigenetic factors such as availability of uh, chromatine, chromatin accessibility. If a chromatin is open, in this case, uh, this locus should contain the right sequence of um, chromatin, chromatin, nucleotides, sorry, nucleotides, uh, sorry. Uh, to which a regulatory protein can bind to. Uh, the, uh, 
presence of this sequence, this signal, is responsible for 30% of uh, signals that make sure that the right genes work. The all other factors, they amount not more than 10%. All in all, the main epigenetic factors but on the other hand, control factors that we can study uh, with the genetic means, for example, studying the specific individual variants, they are in the sequences uh, that regulatory proteins can recognize. All in all, we have to find them out, we have to define them experimentally. Unfortunately, no experiment can show uh, the very site, the very locus uh, where the protein can bind in the, to the DNA. Uh, the table shows six types of experiments. Uh, now there are a great no greater number of them, uh, approximately 10. It's seen that usually the binding of the protein can be as precise as 20 or 30 nucleotides. So, by in informative methods are to be used, for example, comparative uh, words, uh, um, essay, to understand what kind of words, what kind of signals uh, can be recognized by regulatory proteins. This scheme shows very simple we have the quadrates, quadrants uh, that contain the uh, likewise words, uh, the black um, strips. Uh, these are the fragments of the DNA uh, that happened during the experiment. Some of them, they don't contain correct words. It may be the error of the experiment, or we don't know. Uh, we don't know what does it mean that the word is uh, similar. There may be a, a restricted number of letters for the protein to be bound. And when we carry out uh, the root analysis, we may, uh, by chance, not found them. In our work, we studied, we analyzed a great, uh, great experimental database. Uh, the results, uh, we collected different groups one of them is in Novosibirsk, the city of Novosibirsk, under the leadership of Professor Kolpakov. They have more than 5,000 experimental data for different proteins uh, that uh, can bind uh, in different tissues. As I've mentioned and pointed out, uh, the similar protein in different tissues can bind in different places, in different sites. Now we have data related to mice and human. Vertebrates contain 1,400 regulatory proteins. We know the signals that 
can, rec can, recogni can be recognized by the signal proteins 453 for mice and 680 for human beings. It's interesting that many proteins they can recognize uh, many words uh, that are very similar to each other. Despite the fact that we have 1,400 regulatory proteins, uh, the full space of the regulatory motives, uh, they can be recognized by these proteins, are quite smaller, approximately 300, 400. And according to our uh, estimate, 40% uh, are well known. I have uh, mentioned this. Probably it may be related to the fact that and different proteins, uh, they have this similar DNA binding domain. And this domain can recognize the signal in the DNA. and can recognize this similar signal, despite the fact that uh, the uh, rest part of the DNA may be completely different. Apart from this, it's known that in some cases, some proteins, they are bound indirectly uh, uh, be are the proteins uh, that are bound more closely to the DNA. It's known that we have two chromosomes. Uh, an interesting case when on the one chromosome we have a binding protein, but on the uh, another chromosome, there is no such protein present. In this case, we know for sure that the difference in the sequence of these chromosomes may lead to the difference in binding capacity. It's interesting that it's uh, the, very the very sites and there are quite a few, quite few of them. They are well correlated with the well-known uh, morbid mutations that are collected in a clean bar database. If we compare substitutions uh, uh, in DNA with the motifs, we will find out that the variant that binds the protein is better in terms of motif. It looks similar to a, to a good motif. Blue dots, they are, uh, look alike a good motif and uh, red dots, vice versa. When we have a weak motive, a weak motive uh, binds a greater number of proteins. It may be due to epigenetic factors, namely that uh, there are strong binding motive is covered with chromatin and uh, unaccessible. Sometimes uh, the, we can see that substitutions uh, that differ one chromosome from another, Uh, they well agree with motives, and uh, they uh, sometimes allow motive to happen. 
It's interesting that if we integrate a great number of such variants with asymmetric binding on different chromosomes, quite frequently, for a great uh, sets of these positions, of this si low psi, there is a statistically statistical important to be the different types of uh, genetic diseases. For example, uh, in this slide shows uh, the connection with the different types of tumor. Horizontally, we can see different regulatory proteins, horizontal axis, and uh, the vertical axis on the right, uh, we can see different types of oncological diseases. It's seen that, for example, the protein Proxer A1, that is third on the left. It gives uh, the vertical line, it's bound to, it's connected to with the different types of cancer, the prostate, the breast, uh, the rectum cancer. This similar is true for another vertical line that is a bit higher upper. AKZF1 protein. On the other hand, there are maybe cases where we have the horizontal lines available when we have different types of cancer and uh, it's associated with a great number of transcriptional factors. Mm, probably. These factors work in combination, and in case of this type of cancer, chromatin sites are accessible uh, where binding happens. Recently, we have been trying to use this technology to analyze uh, the data of a singular cell transcriptomic. For a fish, Daniel Reira, namely, the, for the gene uh, that uh, governs uh, the neural crest differentiation. It turned out the substitution in the regulatory loci may uh, be uh, may allow to understand how a great number of derivatives of different types. The neural crest uh, may uh, lead to the development of neural cells, uh, the cartilage cells, uh, uh, glia, bra glia cells in the brain, and uh, 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 pigmented cells. It's a very complicated system. On the other hand, it's a very rich in behavior, and if we understand how everything works, probably we can spread uh, these variants of regulations to the other cell governing systems. I'm finishing my presentation. The autobrates, uh, genetically, they are very similar to each other. Morphologically, uh, they are different. But probably this morphological difference is related to the fact that uh, different uh, 
species, uh, they have different uh, epigenetic mechanisms, regulatory mechanisms. And the wide-scale adaptation that is responsible for the living strategies of different types of vertebrates, they are selected genetically uh, via regulatory mutations. These mutations are to be located in the sites uh, that regulate the important gene transcription, in the sites where regulatory proteins uh, bind, or in the very regulatory proteins. But mutations in the regulated proteins, uh, they influence a great number of genes, so that uh, the most probably they are either lethal and can't lead to the modifications that will be on the one hand uh, uh, can ensure life, or on the other hand, uh, uh, some form of new form will emerge. That will allow these uh, species to survive in a new ecological niche. And the developmental defects, including uh, the onset of oncological diseases uh, that at the molecular level is uh, the difficult of the development. Mostly it's related to the transcriptional regulation impairment and mutations, either somatic or hereditary in the regulatory domains. Thank you for the attention. I'd like to show a great number of persons who participated in this work. In the general genetics of the Russian Academy of Science, our colleagues uh, uh, King Abdullah from the Saudi Arabia in the Center by Engineering of the Russian Academy of Science in the Institute of Systemic Biology in the Skolkova University and our numerous students of uh, the MT and the University. Great Thanks for your attention.